United States and around the world, and happy Earth Day. My name is Laura Flower. I run Merit's Employee Garden Program out here in South Jordan. And this year for Earth Day, we wanted to offer a patio and small space gardening workshop so that you can grow your own fruits and vegetables at home. I know a lot of employees probably rent or live in an apartment, or maybe their schedule's really busy and you're hesitant to start a garden for the first time. So this is a great introduction to boost some confidence and start a garden on a small scale that's fun and easy. So we hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first thing to start talking about when you're thinking about what plant do I put in what kind of pot? Well, it kind of depends on how that fruit or vegetable plant grows. So I wanted to categorize four different types of growing habits for fruit and vegetables that might help you decide. So the first type are the trailing or vining uh, type of plants. That would be things like cucumbers, uh, any type of melon or winter squash. They have a mind of their own and they are gonna sprawl and go wherever they want. So having a larger size pot can be really helpful for that. Um, the second type of growth habit is upright or bush type plants. So that would be like tomato plants. It would be peppers. It would be uh, most herbs are gonna kind of have sort of an upright, bushy type growing habit. That could be a foot tall. That could be five feet tall if you're talking about a tomato. Another type of growth habit is root vegetable. So those are items that grow underground and you're gonna dig them up to harvest them. So that would be carrots, that would be radishes, onions, potatoes. So you would also want a decent size pot um, to facilitate that growth happening underground. And the last category is for leafy greens. So that would be things like um, herbs or greens that you are um, sort of taking directly off the plant and putting into a salad like kale, lettuce, and those types of items. They tend not to take up a ton of space and they're a lot more compact. So now that we've got that concept under our belt, we can talk about pot size. So now we can talk a little bit about pot sizes based on different types of plants and how big they get. So here we've got a eight inch pot and here we've got about a 10 inch pot. These types or sizes aren't great for much else than maybe an annual flower or an annual herb like basil or something like that. The important thing to remember here is that the smaller the pot, the faster it's gonna dry out and the greater temperature fluctuation it has because it's only a small little um, size. Uh, this here is a 12 inch container. So in here you could fit a single pepper plant, you could fit a single eggplant, leafy greens, or even strawberries. Then we have even a larger size. This is probably about a five gallon, uh, or at least a 14 inch pot. And here there's a little bit more versatility on what you can grow. So here you could probably do a dwarf tomato, which for those that don't know, there are specific tomatoes that are only uh, bred to get a certain size and stay much more compact. And those are ideal varieties for patio or small space gardening. So small uh, dwarf tomato or cucumber would work really well in this type of container. Now for some of our most favorite summer vegetables and fruits, the whiskey barrel is one of the best things that you can use and offers the greatest versatility. So a normal size tomato, um, either a determinant or an indeterminate tomato could fit in here. You could do a probably a couple cucumber plants. You could do a single winter squash, like butternut squash or spaghetti squash, um, things like that that need a lot more room to grow and to thrive. You could also do multiple small items in here, such as you know four or five different varieties of herbs. You could do your root vegetables like we talked about, such as potatoes or uh, carrots or radishes and all of those items would fit really well in a nice sturdy uh, whiskey barrel like this one. So one of the most 
most important aspects of having a successful patio garden is drainage. So any pot that you're gonna get should come with some drainage holes in the bottom, but if it doesn't, then you'll need to drill some holes so that you make sure that water is properly uh, coming out of the pot. Otherwise, water will pool up and just like us, plant roots need oxygen in order to survive. So making sure that water is coming out of the bottom is really important. The other trick that you can use is you can use some rocks in the bottom of the pot and that will also help so that you're getting that great drainage out of your pot. I get with patio gardening is what type of soil to put in the pots. Well, you want to use a combination of 75% potting soil, which if you can see here is a really light fluffy material with coconut core and perlite, and this helps the pots from getting compacted over time. You can generally find it listed as a potting mix at your local nursery um, or even at your hardware store. The important thing with the potting mix is that you want to make sure that it doesn't necessarily have any fertilizer mixed in with it because we're going to talk about fertilizing here in the next section. The other 25% of material you want to put in the pots all combined together is with compost. Compost is a little different in that it might have uh, wood chips, it might have manure and other things like that that are beneficial for the health of your soil. So 75% potting mix, 25% compost. So what about fertilizing? I know that there are a lot of products out there and it can be really confusing to know what to choose and what's appropriate for uh, your raised garden boxes or a patio gardening scenario. Well, you might notice at the store some all-purpose types of mixes, okay? Generally, I like to choose products that are either organic or they are what's called Omri approved. And that just means that the nutrients in those products is coming from an organic source, whether that's chicken feathers or fish poop, and it gives nutrients in just the right percentage that plants need to thrive. So for the first couple of years of your patio gardening experience, you could use an all-purpose type of mix. Okay, there's lots of different options out there. Uh, over time, you can use uh, a pro one of my favorite products, which is called fish emulsion. And fish emulsion has just the type of nutrients that's responsible for the plants getting big and green and uh, really thriving well. And they need fish emulsion or some type of nitrogen source every single year in order to, to survive and do well. Quick disclaimer on fish emulsion, it is quite stinky even though it's potent and amazing. So I would recommend that using this product for outdoor spaces and not for indoor uh, plants or things like that because someone might get mad at you for stinking up the house. So sunlight is one of the most important elements that any plant needs to survive, but some types need more sun than others. So a quick rule of thumb, any item that fruits, so that could be a cucumber, a tomato, a zucchini, any item like that needs six or more hours of sunlight a day in order to grow properly and give you lots of fruit. If you do not have that much sunlight hitting your balcony or your patio, then uh, leafy vegetables or herbs are really great options as they require less direct sunlight a day, six hours or less. So there's a good rule of thumb to help you know what you can grow in your space depending on how much sun you have. So as you're making your selections for what types of items you want to grow on your patio, I always recommend growing a diversity of items. So I know most people want that prized tomato and that's fantastic. 
but also don't forget to plant flowers and herbs and different things like that in order to attract pollinators to your patio garden. Uh, without those beneficials like bees and butterflies and various other beneficial insects, uh, you won't have as much success with pollination and you won't get as much fruit. So make sure that you're growing that nice diversity of flowers, herbs, and vegetables in your patio garden. Don't be afraid to get creative with what types of uh, pots you're gonna grow in. You can go to the thrift store and find all sorts of fun stuff to plant your items in. Just remember, the smaller the pot, the quicker the pot's gonna dry out, and getting the right size for the types of vegetables or flowers you wanna grow is the most important thing. There are also items that you can get, such as these cloth bags that are very mobile, where if you happen to move or you want something that's really temporary, these are really handy to use and uh, really convenient as well. So get creative, have fun, enjoy. If you're ready to start your patio gardening adventure and you want great success for your first try, some of the items that I would suggest for growing tomatoes, zucchinis, hot peppers, and annual herbs like basil. A quick pro tip on what kind of cages different tomatoes need is all based on how large that tomato gets. And there are three main sizes of tomatoes. There's dwarf, as I mentioned earlier. Some of those only get two or three feet tall and they're very compact. The next largest size is a determinant tomato, which get four to five feet tall and can do really well with a classic round cage like this. The largest size of tomato is a indeterminate tomato. Those can get six feet tall and they need a really heavy duty trellis. We make these large concrete remesh cages out at our garden and they handle really well with those large tomatoes. So as you're planting your tomatoes out, make sure you get the right kind of cage. you don't have a balcony or you don't have a lot of direct sunlight to grow some of the items we're talking about today, I just wanted to introduce the idea of microgreens. Microgreens can be grown inside and they are basically bulk seeds that you purchase such as uh, spicy lettuce mixes, broccoli, kale, you could do sunflower seeds, all sorts of different things and you grow them in these trays in a really compact space and they're a great option to get some wonderful veggies in your diet in a really small space. So to grow them, all you need is a little tray with holes in the bottom. You put a little potting mix, similar to the one that we talked about, that light fluffy material, and you put about an inch in the bottom of the tray. You wet that in and then you seed whatever item you would like to in the tray and wait a couple weeks and this happens, it's pretty darn simple. And then when you're ready to harvest, you come in here with a pair of scissors and just cut those greens down to the soil line. Rinse them off, unless you love the taste of dirt, and eat them. If you want a little bit more in-depth information on some of the ideas that we've talked about, there's a couple of links provided that will share uh, information on how to start your own plants by seed as well as how to start your own home garden. So if you're interested in those, feel free to check those out. In general, the way that food is grown really impacts the health of our planet. So a couple of suggestions on how to support a healthy food system in a way that's in your control is to shop locally at local farmers markets when food is seasonal um, and also to buy organic when or if that's possible for you. If you want some other ideas about how to cultivate some sustainable habits in your life, then you can visit earthday.org for some more information and some great tips on how to incorporate simple habits into your life that make an impact. Happy Earth Day! Thanks for